This is Hugh for Tone Twins TV. This is going to be the first of a two-part series detailing the, um, not so much restoration, but more the kind of upgrades and um, refurbing or refinishing of a Joe Bonamassa signature Firebird. This particular version of the Joe Bonamassa Firebird is finished in polymist gold metallic. It looks amazing, but the owner doesn't like the kind of thick plasticky feel of this guitar. And once we just strip it off and refinish it in uh, nitrocellulose um, in Inverness green, which is a really rare Gibson custom colour. I'm also going to be upgrading the dots to uh, real celluloid and I'm going to be uh, installing a Sunbear pickup and refurbishing the wiring with vintage inspired pots and a period correct ceramic capacitor. So I've got to get this bushing out and one way to do that is to get a piece of dowel that's just about wide enough or narrow enough to go down inside the, the hole of the bushing, press down against the bottom, yeah, and to take one of the stud screws, I'm going to need to use my screwdriver here because I haven't got the quite the right tool to do this, the specialist tool, but uh, wrap the end of the screwdriver in a little bit of uh, masking tape to protect the plating on the screw and hopefully as you screw down into this it will start to lift up I can see this from this that the uh, the lacquer is about a millimetre thick, so we're going to have our work cut out uh, getting this stuff off, but hey ho. Despite my best efforts, this one isn't coming out um, with the dowel method, so what I've done is just drilled a hole that's slightly wider in diameter than the bushing, which I'm placing over the top. i got a washer, which again is just wider than the the bushing and I'm hoping with this ultra sophisticated tool it's going to just pull this thing out there you go simple as that um, you can buy specialist tools to do this but all you really need is a washer and a piece of wood with a hole in it and that came out super easy I think I'll keep this and use it again With these Epiphone Bonamassa Firebirds, you get the proper kind of banjo tuners. Uh, they weigh an absolute ton, but uh, these Firebirds don't really look right without them, I don't think. Okay, everything is stored safely in the takeaway container and pop those there get that together well there's no way to sugarcoat this the process of stripping an epiphone finish is an absolute nightmare um, it's multi-layered the outer layer is absolutely fine to get off um, with a heat gun and i just tend to use 
sharp chisels and a lot of uh, patience. Um, the problem is really the base, like there's a clear base coat on it, which um, is really, really tough. And there's a slightly different technique for getting rid of that. So if you decide to do this to an Epiphone, it's, it's a very, very time consuming process that needs a lot of patience. Uh, there's no way, don't rush it because you'll just make a mess of your guitar, except the fact that you're probably going to create a few chips and gouges in the wood. So if the intention was to turn this into a sunburst finish, uh, I wouldn't have even taken this project on. Um, and if you look online for videos about stripping Epiphone guitars, you're unlikely to find one. So, well, one that kind of really gives you the information you need. So here's my heat gun. Got my chisels, guitars on the workbench. Obviously, I haven't put any padding underneath it because uh, I'm not concerned about damaging the finish. I've got a couple of bench dogs just holding it firm, and this is going to take an awful long time. So I'll just take you through the the basic technique that I find works best for me, and uh, then I'll put it on fast forward. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start by trying to get rid of this uh, gold finish on the top. And uh, for that, I'm going to use quite a lot of heat. Um, I'm trying not to burn it, and I'm not going to try and get through to the wood straight away. Okay, as you can see, it's it's coming off quite nicely. Um, rather than use the bevel edge this way, I tend to go in flat and just kind of prise it off. If you feel any resistance, you should not push because you might be digging into wood. Um, as you can see, this kind of glossy layer, which is quite brittle, um, just sits on top of a silver base coat. Well, a silver coat which is on top of the base coat. So at the moment, all I'm trying to do is get off the outer colour. So uh, let's crack on with that. Like I said, sharp chisel, a lot of care, a lot of patience. What you can see there is that uh, I managed to get through the silver layer and there's a kind of slightly kind of foggy looking but very very hard clear layer underneath you can see the wood with a lot of um, um, poly stripping videos um, you'll notice that the, the the poly actually kind of starts to bubble and just kind of almost flake off the finish um, and that's certainly true of certain fender poly finishes but it's not the case with the Epiphone stuff at all It's really funny looking at areas like this and it's almost like you can see the wood through uh, a layer of glass which is really really strange. So for this um, part of the job I use the highest uh, setting on the heat gun and one area to be really careful is around the edges because sometimes if you happen to kind of get under the wood or some of the undercoat starts to um, come away as well it can actually take the wood with it because it's uh, it really does stick to the wood very very closely there's a silver layer on top of this clear base coat i can kind of take this off as well uh, if i'm really careful using the high heat setting some of the base coat flaking away there. If this looks easy, um, it kind of kind of is and kind of isn't. Um, I've already stripped the back and kind of 
figured out how to do this. So, um, yeah, it's a definite technique to it and you develop a feel as you're going along. So that's the outer layer and the silver layer and we're just down to the base coat and you know I mean theoretically it'd be possible at this point just to get this kind of sanded back and spray lacquer over the top of it. Um, in fact I've done that previously um, with a flying V because uh, another Bonamassa one actually because uh, the top is actually veneered and you know it just would have ended up being an absolute nightmare to do otherwise but uh, with this this is solid wood and you can also see it's a through proper through neck um, construction so it's such a shame they Epiphone plaster this rubbishy finish all over these guitars uh, because in every other respect they're fantastic so what I've got to do now is get this stripped back to bare wood and that's the difficult bit. So I'm going to kind of close up on this now because this is getting rid of the base layer time and although you can kind of absolutely blast it with uh, heat and it kind of pops off you kind of risk burning the wood and everything so what I find works better for me is to use a really sharp chisel and a medium setting on the heat gun so I don't want to get it too hot at all so the idea is to kind of come in and just kind of I find it best to work across the grain if you work with the grain it tends you have a greater chance of kind of gouging out the wood so I'm working across the grain Wait for this to get warm enough bit of a splinter there but uh, there's going to be some filler in there and this little section here is now back down to uh, raw wood so I'm not going to film the whole process because uh, I'm probably going to be at this now for another few hours I would set aside a day to strip one of these guitars at the very least and uh, my best advice is when you start kind of getting regular chips or you feel like you're kind of losing patience with it, just go off, have a cuppa, um, do something else, leave it till the following day. But just take your time and uh, be patient and you'll get good results. But I think it's almost inevitable that you're gonna get a certain amount of damage to the wood, which is why if you're gonna do this, probably best to do a uh, solid, anticipate doing a solid color. Apologies for not filming this bit, but I actually took out the horrible pasty dots that Epiphone use uh, because the owner asked me if I could put some celluloid ones in. And the procedure is really simple. I just center one of these brad point bits. In this case, it was four millimeters. And I just drill out the dot and it leaves like a little ring of the original dot around the outside. Then I just put in a soldering iron, heat it up to about 350 degrees centigrade and just run it around the edge. It just softens this horrible pasty material and then you can just gently prise it away from the edges. To get the holes to the right diameter, I use um, a regular six millimeter drill bit because I've got six millimeter dots for this. And the trick is to run the drill in reverse because going counterclockwise, you get a really clean hole. It just uh, 
opens it out to the correct diameter. If you run the drill clockwise, uh, the drill bit will kind of chip out the edge of the hole and you'll end up with a little bit of a mess and you have to do a load of patching. So the dots that I got are actually celluloid and I've put one in already. The originals on a US made one would probably be 6.35 millimeters which is quarter of an inch but uh, these are close enough I think. So these came from Rothko and Frost in the UK and I'm just going to install the rest of these now. When you look at the dots you can often see if uh, one side is a little bit more figured and interesting than the other. So what I'm going to do is line this up over the hole and using just this little bit of dowel here I'm just going to put that on the top very gently tap this guy in it's quite a good strong friction, friction fit just going to leave that a little bit proud of the surface I'm just going to run a tiny bit of super glue in there just let it wick in and then wipe it off straight away okay so that's three in and probably about seven to go so the thing to do now is to get a scraper blade and just kind of run it across the top of these uh, just to kind of clean up the wood and make sure that everything is really flush and smooth and level. Um, the board is kind of filthy and it's got some kind of horrible coating on it so when I put this one in um, I did that scraping procedure and the, the wood just feels natural and really nice so I'm going to do that between all the frets and I'll just clean up this fretboard and make it look and feel really good and then I'll get the side dots in. Okay, I'm just uh, using one of these blades, which you can pick these up on eBay for next to nothing. I buy them like 200 at a time. And they just make such useful scrapers, just great general all round glue three tools for next to nothing. And as soon as you feel that they're going blunt and not cutting quite as well as they used to, which is kind of the case with this one. Uh, throw it out and get a fresh one. I'm going to do that now. Oh, there you go. These scraper blades are just, uh, they leave a really, really smooth surface behind which is smoother even than sanding the fretboard. You can end up with a load of detritus just lined up along the edge of the fret and you can just run the blade down and uh, clean that up very, very easily. Okay, that's super smooth now. And that feels great. Okay, I'll do all the dots first and then I'll do all the in-between frets. Um, that one's done, I've got to do those two. Having stripped the edge of the neck, uh, we're left with quite sharp corners there on the edge of the fretboard. So what I'm doing is covering over the frets and using this beveling tool, which has got a, which has got a diamond file on it. It's kind of... Uh, cuts quickly but it's it leaves quite a smooth surface and I'm just basically rebeveling the edges of the frets just to kind of soften them in a little bit and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to roll over the edges of the board so this is simply a case of carefully working along the whole of the edge of the fretboard and I've already done the, the treble side just doing the base side now and this should be a fairly quick process 
So I'm going in now with a handheld file. Uh, it's the same kind of thing, just uh, a very fine diamond file. And I'm going to hold the, the file so it's a little bit of a steeper angle. And I'm just going down to just kind of start kissing the corner of the, the, the fretboard and uh, re start removing some of the wood. And you can tell when the wood starts to, to uh, just get filed because the color of the dust changes from metallic to that kind of dark brown rosewood stuff. Um, I'm being really subtle about this because I'm going to go in later and just finesse the edges. So the edges of the border feel a lot nicer now, but uh, I'm just going to go for that super kind of played in rolled edge feel. So what I do is I take a strip of um, 320 grit paper. I move the guitar further down this way. And it's cut almost to the width of the, the fret spacing. And I just do this, it's got a shoe shine sanding technique and it rolls the edges of the, the board really smoothly and uh, quite evenly. And that feels really, really nice. So I just work my way along this board and it should give the guitar a much more comfortable played in feel. So these Epiphones come with really small side dots. I've just replaced the dot at the third fret and I'm putting wider dots in so it looks more kind of vintage correct. So what I've got is some really small white plastic dots from Rothko and Frost, just plain white. And they're three mil in dia diameter. And I'm using this Brad point bit. And I'm going in freehand. Um, when I did the first one, I noticed that uh, the dot is actually slightly off center. Um, so it's slightly towards the top of the uh, fretboard, uh, further towards the top than it is towards the bottom edge. So what I'm gonna do is just very slightly offset this hole. It might get into the round over a little bit, but that's fine. probably good enough okay so I'm going to want to get a little bit of super glue into here so here's a cool trick if you get some uh, masking tape and I just put it on the kind of open end of this solder reel here what I'm going to do is just press it down slightly and I'm gonna just put a little bit of super glue into the bottom of it now it's easy with a whip tip, but if you haven't got a whip tip, I'm just using a, a, just a little hook on the end of a guitar string there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, is it going to focus? More or less. Okay, just a little hook on the end of it. Just pick up a little bit of super glue. Drop it into the hole. Saves it running everywhere. Gonna drop in one of these dots. Just tap it in. Okay. Leave that a couple of seconds and then I'll flush it off. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this uh, chisel, which is probably be a little bit sharper, and I'm just gonna carefully slice this off. it over now be really careful not to get into the wood okay once I've got it to that point just going to take a little sanding block okay and then I'll just take a scraper blade 
clean off the rosewood from the dot. Well, in the end, it took me over three days to strip this guitar and prep it for respraying. And I couldn't resist kind of collecting all the, the shavings and bits of paint detritus that had fallen everywhere, scooping them up into a bag and popping them on the scales. And I was astonished to discover it was, it weighed at over half a pound. So the guitar is just light as a feather now and I couldn't resist stringing it up and just kind of giving it a go and it's just ringing and chiming it feels really alive so I'm not saying that the finish was dampening the resonance of this guitar but uh, taking it off um, really hasn't done it any harm whatsoever so I'm going to leave it here for now I've hope that if you've ever entertained the notion of refinishing an Epiphone you'll have some idea of the work that's involved, some of the techniques you'll need to use and also how difficult it is to get that pesky base coat that they insist on using off the wood. In the second instalment I'll be showing you how I refinish this guitar and also how I go about relicking it um, and I'll be showing you how I'm going to upgrade the wiring as well but uh, I'll give you a little teaser and say that um, this will start off with a um, change of plan right at the beginning but I'll save that till the next episode. Anyway I hope you enjoyed watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you all again soon. Dabble.